Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Grant. And I'm Kari. We have the distinct honor of being the Masters of Ceremonies for this year's graduation. Now, to give you all a little bit of background, I've known Grant for about seven years. And in that time, I've learned some pretty valuable lessons, like keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I've learned about how important it is to have a peer whose excellence inspires you to do better and excel further. And it's been really meaningful for me being that person for Grant. <laughs> the class of 2018 has a prestigious and wide-ranging selection of colleges that spans the globe. Wesleyan, NYU, Barnard, Carnegie Mellon, Oxford Brooks, Amherst, Northwestern, my apologies, Northeastern, and many more amazing schools. Your children have put in countless hours of studying, crying, and stressing to reach the point they are at today. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here to recognize the students for the National Honor Society. The National Honor Society recognizes students who demonstrate excellence in the areas of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Founded in 1921, the National Honor Society is the nation's leading organization that recognizes high school students that have distinguished themselves as overall leaders in their school community. I hope you had fun at York as well as learn. I'm sure you're ready for college, and I hope the colleges are ready for you. Uh, as one of your teachers, I want to thank you for putting up with me. Um, I've tried to give you my thoughts, but the truth is that all year long you probably had to put up with my opinions much too much. I do not really apologize for that. <laughs> Having an opinion, and in my case probably a contrarian one, is something um, I, that I think is good. I, it, means, it doesn't mean you can't change your ideas. It doesn't mean you can't discuss something. It means you start with a point of view and you encourage someone else to challenge you. You may be right, you may be wrong, but having no opinion implies to me that you've not thought about the subject. So I encourage you to form an opinion and to be prepared not only to discuss it, but also to be persuaded to a different opinion if the other side makes a better argument. We have a sort of prejudice against opinionated people. Now, obviously, you cannot have an opinion on everything because you cannot know everything. Be very suspicious of people who know everything. But I think the prejudice is somewhat based on the police belief that people with opinions cannot change their minds. And of course, faced with new facts and arguments, you can. So imagine a group of people in a darkened room in a museum trying to discover what they are feeling. One describes ears, one describes a nose, one describes feet, one describes a tail, one describes the body, and then a brave soul pushes up an opinion. I think we've got a hippopotamus here. And he may be right. Or someone can say, I forgot to tell you, there's a horn on the front. I think it's a rhinoceros. And everyone agrees, including the person whose original opinion was that it was a hippopotamus. Obviously, it's going to be a difficult thing to come to a point of view. But if the subject is interesting and you get enough information, I encourage you to strike out and have an opinion. It is with great happiness that I stand up here today and introduce someone I have such admiration for. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Jackson through the Garden of Dreams Foundation while receiving a $25,000 scholarship a few weeks ago. Although he did not have to, Mr. Jackson spoke with me for 15 minutes and told me how he knew all about me. I stood there in awe as one of my Broadway heroes told me that he read my bio and was a fan of me. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> I've had some amazing experiences in my life. I've had the chance to come from a very small town at the southern tip of Illinois, Cairo, Illinois, population about 1,200 people, to New York City in 1993. And I was able to study acting 
just a few blocks down at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. And I graduated in 1995. My first Broadway show was an original cast of The Lion King in 1997. The first of seven Broadway shows in the last 22 years. I've performed for presidents, for kings and queens, for heads of state, thousands of performances for millions of people. And now I'm on a TV show every week, every week playing a stylist. <laughs> and I mentioned all of those things because they took time. Each experience described in a chapter uh, of a course of life that I chose right around the time that I sat in seats like the one you're sitting in today. Now you guys have a lot of weight on your shoulders. Our country, our world is in the midst of upheaval and the time is fast approaching when you're gonna have to lead the rest of us old people and I wish to God that we had been more successful at getting past our long-held hang-ups and grudges. I wish that my generation had taken up the mantle of civility and, and sought justice for oppressed people. And some of us have. But I wish that we had done a better job of listening to our forebears and connecting the dots and continuing the fight. But I think we got distracted by our technology and our cultural flashpoints and reality TV. So my word for you today is, don't do that. <laughs> do better. There's a place for us so I transferred to York after my sophomore year, and it was one of the best decisions I have ever made on my own. I was really, really shy and quiet at the beginning of our junior year, as most of you guys have known each other for more than three years. My presence seemed to be a little bit strange. I didn't quite understand most of your conversations during breaks, but found out quickly that one thing everyone seemed to extremely enjoy was making fun of Robert Milgram. <laughs> By the way, Robbie, when I said I disagree with you in Mr. Buckley's AP class last year, I really did disagree with you. <laughs> if you want me to name one particular aspect of York that is the most fascinating to me, I'd say it is the teachers here. They are not only teachers, but friends, mentors, and advocates. May the graduated class of 2018 please arise. You may now remove your tassels. Congratulations. <laughs>